Welcome to Fresh Bread for today. Again, I'm so glad you were able to stop by and watch the program today. I believe it's going to be encouraging, and I think it's exciting to get into the Word of God always, always, whether we're doing it by ourselves or we're doing it before a, a, a congregation or sharing it with the Word with our friends. It's just great. It's always fun. So today, as I uh, share this message, the name of it, I believe I what I've titled it is, Are You the One? It's based on Luke 7, verses 18 through 35 or so, and it's about John the Baptist. Whenever he was, you know, in prison and about to be beheaded, he wanted to know for sure. He needed to know that he knew that he knew that Jesus Christ was the Messiah, that he was the one that Malachi was talking about and prophesying, and that he was the one that everyone uh, needed to know was the Messiah. So he sent, John sends two of his disciples to Jesus and, and uh, he says, find out, just go ask him. And so they come and they say, you know, John the baptizer has uh, sent us here to ask the questions. And uh, his question is, are you the one? Or are we to wait and expect someone else? And Jesus went about his business as always, healing the sick, um, causing the dead to be raised, causing the blind to see, uh, doing what Jesus did best and still does best to, to this day. And so um, let's just go ahead and read some of the scriptures before I, I get on to the teaching. Verse 18, and it talks about, um, it says, Then the disciple of John reported to him concerning all these things, and John, calling two of the disciples to him, sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Verse 20, when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? And that very hour he cured many infirmities, afflictions, and evil spirits, and many blind he gave sight. Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John uh, the things you have seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them, and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Now let's think about this for a minute. Here's John sitting in prison, about to be beheaded, you know, knowing that death is imminent, and he's really only concerned about that one thing. I don't think he was sitting there uh, waiting on Jesus to come and uh, break him out of prison. I don't believe he was really sitting there thinking that the angels are going to show up and, and open the prison doors. I think that all that was on the heart of, of John, because I believe he knew in his spirit that it was his time and that he was, you know, he was about to die. But he wanted to know and make sure that his whole life of preaching in the wilderness and having the message of prepare ye the way, for the one to come. He wanted to make sure that he knew that he knew that Jesus Christ was the one. So as he sent the disciples like we were reading and like we were saying earlier, uh, that's, that's where uh, John's heart was. I just need to know that my life has been worth it and that you are the one. And if not, I need to make sure I let others know that uh, as awesome as you are, Jesus, and I know I've heard about all the miracles and the things you've been doing, but if you're not the Messiah, I need to make sure my disciples carry on that message that there's another one coming. But that wasn't the case. Jesus went on about his business as the disciples were sitting there waiting to really get an answer. And um, Jesus goes ahead and he does what he does best, which is healing and, and raising the dead and all the things that Jesus did, you know, did and does. And finally, Jesus had to just point blank say, look, go back and tell John what you've seen and what you've heard. And they, and they were just sitting there, you know, probably thinking to themselves, well, is that really the answer? Because Jesus didn't say, I, I am that I am. Uh, I believe he felt like and believed that his works were signs enough and that just the presence of the Spirit of the Lord on him was enough and that those disciples could discern and feel that that was the truth. But Jesus said, you know, really, 
what I want John to know is that I don't want him to be offended because of me. Because there will be things that I do that will be able to cause people to be offended. I mean, he was offending people left and right. The Sadducees, the Pharisees, the religious crowd, you know, would get mad and say, well, isn't that John? I mean, isn't this Jesus, the, the son of Joseph? And uh, isn't that John the Baptist crazy, you know, running around saying, prepare you the way of the coming of the Lord and, and all the things that, you know, John was doing. And yet John and Jesus had the same persecution and the same uh, resistance from the religious people and people of no faith at all thought they were crazy. But Jesus didn't let that bother him. He didn't care. And he wanted the people not to be offended by him. He really wants every one of us to come to the place of knowing who he is, that he is the one, that is the great I am, the I am that I am. I am whatever you need. If you need to be healed, I'm it. If you need to be saved, I'm the way. If you need to, uh, to know and have revelation, I'm the truth. He wanted everyone to know that he was the Messiah. I mean, he even had to ask his disciples, well, who do you say that I am? And, uh, you know, at first they started out going, well, some say you're, you know, you're this and you're this one and you're that one. And Jesus said, no, I want to know who are you thinking that I am. And finally, it was Peter that says, you're the Christ. You're the Christ, the Messiah. You know, the one that I am, that I am. You are the one that we're looking for. And I, I think that every one of us have the opportunity to um, to be offended by the words and, and the actions of Jesus sometimes when we don't understand what's going on. I mean, we've all have prayers that we're still waiting to be answered. We still have uh, prayers that we haven't understood, that it, it didn't work out the way that we thought, and uh, Jesus didn't quite do, you know, if we were in charge, we would have done it this way, that way, and that way. And, you know, a lot of times we sit around and, and we um, actually have conversations with the Lord and, and try to tell Him how to do His business. Uh, you know, I mean, we've all done it. And there's been opportunities that when things didn't go the way we wanted, that we got offended. There was a time in my life that I was very devastated and very disappointed about what was going on in my life. And I thought I was going to be an incognito Christian. I was angry with God. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to walk away from him totally, but I, I was very honest with him. He knew I was mad. Um, I didn't want people, I didn't want to be around people. I didn't want to minister anymore. I didn't want to be, you know, um, I didn't want to be in church. I didn't, you know, I'd watch church on television and I'd get in the word and stay in the word. And, and then, um, what, uh, during the time that I was a flight attendant, this was going on years ago. And I can remember being in Chicago and a group of the flight attendants at the crash pad was going to go to a bar. I've told this, you probably, some of you have heard this before, but was going to go to a really famous bar there. And I thought, well, I'll go and have a cup of coffee and just, you know, hang out with the, with my peeps here. Um, although they were like 20 years younger than I, I, uh, you know, was, but anyway, so I decided to go and I was sitting there drinking a cup of coffee. And one of the guys, uh, in our group was going, what is it? Why is it that you look so out of place? And I was furious. I was so mad because I thought, really? Really, Jesus, you sat with people that were prostitutes, wine bibblers, you know, all kinds of, of different things that was so unacceptable during that time of, of his walk on earth. And I thought, you could do that. And I can't even sit here and have coffee with a bunch of sinners. I mean, I was so mad. So my friend walked me back to the crash pad. And so I was sitting in there all by myself. Everybody was still at the bar and I was sitting there. And, and that's when I, I really realized that the Lord uh, got me again. You know, I just thought, okay, Lord, I give up. I cry, I cry, uncle. I can't, you know, continue to be rebellious and let this anger and hurt um, and uh, unforgiveness to, to remain there. And so I just really got it before the Lord. And, and uh, we talked about it and he healed me. And, and uh, you know, after that, I just came, you know, back into a church setting and, and began to minister again and blah, blah, blah. The story goes on and on. But I guess my point is, is that I had actually been offended. I was offended at God because I was believing that, that he was going to do what I was praying. What I was praying was right. What I was believing the Lord for was right. But what I wasn't doing is understanding somebody else in that situation had a will and they were choosing not to serve the Lord and not to go God's way. And so instead of just totally being upset and hurt and, and uh, having unforgiveness towards that person, I really got angry at God because I knew he had the power to do anything. 
I mean, nothing's too difficult for him. But what he won't do is is uh, trespass and go against the human will. That's what, you know, that's what makes it so different from the animals and everything else. We have free choice and, and we get to choose whether we're going to serve him and allow him to come into our heart and bring us into a salvation experience and, and into a relationship and right standing with uh, the Father because of all the things that Jesus did. Or are we going to stay offended? Are we going to stay offended because of him? Uh, when we see other people's prayers being answered, when we see other people being healed and we're not, when we see marriages being restored and ours isn't, when we see people that are raised from the deathbed and actually have clinically died and come back to life, but our loved one didn't, oh, those are opportunities to be offended. But the Lord said, don't be offended because of me. And that's what my message today is. We're not going to be offended at the things um, that we don't understand. We're going to trust the Lord. We're going to walk in faith. We're going to wait and see how the Lord works it out, and we're going to be grateful. And I know that if we're uh, not careful that when we get offended like that, you'll do if you, you haven't done this and you end up offended, I just want you to know what you're going to be facing. You'll be walking away from uh, the church. You'll be walking away from your time in prayer. You'll be walking away from your uh, witness. You'll be walking away from the peace. And, um, you know, that's a miserable place to be. I know that. I've done that for a period, about 18 months, and it was just, it was horrible. Then you find yourself doing things and getting into sin that you had no business, you know, even considering, let alone participating in. Uh, when that offense comes, and the Lord's saying, don't be offended. Don't be offended because of me. And uh, uh, that's the word for today. You know, are you the one? And when he answers, yes, I am, then just say, Lord, okay, I'm going to accept you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I'm going to trust you that everything is going to work out together, whether I understand it or not. So as we, you know, finish up here, I just want to take time to pray and ask the Lord to just reach out and touch you where you are. I ask the Holy Spirit now to just move in that room, that car, wherever you are when you're listening to this. Maybe you're at work. Maybe you're sitting alone thinking, oh, Father, my life is messed up, and I don't even know if you are who you say you are. I ask the Holy Spirit now to move on your behalf again to, to um, comfort you begin to encourage you, to strengthen you, to bring hope back into, into your heart. I ask the Holy Spirit to reach out and to begin to move on your behalf and that we will continue to make intercession and prayer and, and put our petitions before the Lord. And I just ask the Lord to bless you this day. I ask you to ask the Lord to forgive you of anything that hinders uh, your walk with Him. If you're a backslider, slide back on into the uh, right standing of, of uh, Christ that you you were given by the death of Jesus Christ and the blood that was shed by him. I ask that the Holy Spirit just, just encircle you right now with his love of compassion and strengthen you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, until I see you the next time, be blessed, and I look forward to the next teaching and the next piece of bread from the Bread of Life for today.